Hey guys, this is going to be the weekly angelic message for November 4th, 2019. The first thing I want to say is do not shoot the messenger. I didn't do it. I don't know what to tell you. Let me take my glasses off. Let's see how that does. I know I can't see. Ready? All right. Here we go. All right. So still take your time. I think that was kind of hanging on to last week's message. When you find your heart racing, stop and find joy. We get too wound up in our schedules. I do the same thing. You know, I will beat myself up if I don't get everything done on my list. And it's usually about a week's worth of stuff that I'm trying to do in one day. <laughs> and I get mad at myself for not having the energy to get through it. So they're encouraging us to not fall into that basically. All right. Do something fun either on your own or with people you love. So this is engaging and aligning with joy, doing heart opening kinds of things. And a lot of times that is spending time with our loved ones or just spending time on your own. You could be your own loved one. You know what I mean? Hey. All right. <laughs> Many of you find yourselves moving away from those that are demanding, cruel, diminishing. If you are sensitive, then you may find guilt rising. Okay. Each human makes a choice of how they want to live. You can do nothing but offer love and keep your distance. No, this is not an act of judgment because we see that all the time in the spiritual community, right? Where it's like, you're so not gonna, well, if I was going to have a t-shirt, it should say it's, it's so not gonna, right? <laughs> but people do that. They judge, they act like other people have really bad energy and all this stuff when really they're the ones going around with, you know, whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, this is not an act of judgment, but of realizing what you sacrifice to serve. Now be careful with this message too. A lot of people, especially spiritual people love to martyr themselves. Yes. Oh, I do so much. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking about people who are genuine empaths, who are genuinely sensitive, who have that codependency thing. It's, it's common with us. And you're learning to not let people feed off of you. You're learning to do things that bring you joy. That's important. All right. Um, where were we? Beep, 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 beep. Where were we? Eh. But of realizing what you sacrifice to serve when in truth you do not serve anyone, especially yourself, when you are allowing another to pull you astray. Many, okay, this is where I'm like, don't, don't y'all come for me. Don't you come for me. Don't, I didn't do it. Okay. Many of you watching Michelle are the perpetrators of toxicity. And that's where I quit my job. I just moved to another country. Many of you watching Michelle are the perpetrators of toxicity. <sighs> Will you turn around for your time is done in feeding? We offer you a different way if you will choose it. With love we bring you, it's from Archangel Uriel and Angels of God's Light. So let's talk about the call out, okay? <laughs> that shocked me. Because um, when I'm doing the auto write, I kind of, I step aside. And when I saw that coming out, I was like, er, wait, huh? You want me to say what on camera and like put that out there? Eh. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. There are people that track my energy. There are people that will track the Angel Souls family, okay? There are people that come on there and or come on here and they'll leave these comments that are subtle digs. And it's all to rattle to, for me, and I'm sure other readers go through this too, but to rattle us, to make us doubt our abilities, to make us think that we're not offering anything of real value and maybe we should move on. Those people are out there and they just called you out. It's not like they just found you. They have been seeing you and I'm not the only one. It's not just me, but they're calling you out and saying, Hey, you have a chance to turn things around. And I, I'm thinking, I know, uh, <laughs> it, you know, as an empath, it's been very difficult to have healthy relationships with people. I'm just going to give this example here for a moment. And so what I end up doing is I end up attracting in people who usually they can't make their own light. And so they come in, it's like somebody who's starving. Like, I don't want to turn them away. Um, these are people who don't feel love. These are people who are clearly coming from a place of pain. Um, maybe even being a little misguided about what their source of power is, all of these things. And so me as an empath, and I bet a lot of you can relate, I wouldn't turn them away. 
And so what happens? I try to form a friendship with them and it's abusive. I'm not going to lie. Okay. That's the word I would put on it. It's abusive. And a lot of those people, as soon as it started getting like that, uh, the most recent one, I called them out. I set a boundary and then I went my separate way and I'm sure they still watch. I'm sure they do. Now, I didn't even think about that until this came out and just now <laughs> reading this and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that does make sense. So for those of you who are just trying to be negative, spread negativity, I love you. And that's, that's 100% true. I love you. The angels love you. God loves you. If you don't believe in God, I mean, okay, whatever. I mean, you do whatever you're going to do with that, <laughs> right? But you are loved. You are loved. And you do not need to keep choosing the way that you do. You do not need to attack someone who may have turned you away. I had to. I had to. Or to attack people who you feel you, you don't like all the love that's coming out of them. Okay. You don't love that they're leveling with you. You don't love that they're speaking the truth because that's dangerous, isn't it? Some of you out there are perpetuating the toxicity. Be careful with the choices that you make. Be careful with what you say. Okay. I mean, I just had somebody who, I guess I shouldn't, I shouldn't really do this, but you know, let's just say generically people writing to me and giving a backhanded compliment, right? I don't always relate to what you're saying, which is fine. That's not, you know, that's fine. Um, you know, and I didn't really want to follow you for the longest time because I just thought this, this, and this about you. And they were judging me <laughs> totally. Like, and they're just putting it right. If you guys really learn to spot that stuff, you can, you can see people for what they are and where they're at, not for what they are, where they're at, I think is more accurate. Um, and you can sense whether they're going to come in and be a toxic force, right? So some of these people are coming in, they're, they're giving criticism and saying, but I love you. Oh. No, you don't. You're a liar. Okay. <laughs> like you didn't come in here with no kind of loving energy. You're just in here to cause trouble or you're in here to spread your pain. And I, I still, guys, I'm out on the internet. So um, not a big channel, but big enough. You know, almost 50,000 subscribers. That's 50,000 people. And of that 50,000 people, presumably they're not bots. I hope they're not. I don't buy subscribers, okay? It's been all organic. <laughs> so I don't know who, who these people are. But there could be some toxic people out there who are just, we call them trolls. Um, but even in calling them trolls, I think that's just sort of sidestepping the real issue, right? Oh, they're just trolls. Just get over it. Wow. Hi. Yeah. Go ahead and have a seat and have some pie while the rest of us do all the heavy lifting by all means. Like, no, start calling that stuff out. Okay. And stop accepting it <laughs> is all I'm saying. All right. So I kind of want to do a couple of decks here. Let's do the Gabriel deck. Boom. There's that one and then this other one. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, 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 knocking things around is what I'm doing. What should we start with? We'll start with this one here. This is the Tony Carmine Salerno. I feel like I'm shedding. I shed like a dog. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> People need to vacuum their pet hair. I have to vacuum my own hair up out of the rug. I'm telling you. I'm not bald yet. Waiting. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not going to happen. No, no, no. All right. Let's see what we have going on. How many people have unsubscribed from me now because of that message who hate me now? Well, it's not like you hate me now. You hated me before and you hate everybody. You probably hate yourself. So I guess no harm, no foul. Clearing space for other people to come in. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we have here. Jade Mountain. Oh my gosh. So this is a good card. This is talking about just like, a, you know, we all kind of got called out just now. Huge reality check. Not just saying what people want to hear. Giving it. Okay. We're giving it. And that doesn't mean in a mean way. Um, this just means we're still in the process of climbing that mountain. And yet we've, we've made it. It's good fortune. Um, it's good fortune from our good choices. Okay. And for those of you out there that are the ones <laughs> that the angels called out, 
Um, <laughs> um, what shall I say to you? You better change your ways. You better change your ways. Turn that energy around. It's not a threat. It's just, you know, you do you. But if you're not going to be able to participate in the good if you're putting toxic energy out. But for a lot of people, we're going to see a bit of a victory this week. Or uh, the victory may not be what your ego tells you. Oh, I want that job. Or, you know, that's an ego thing. This is more of like a, oh, I'm falling in love with life again. Oh, I understand now. Oh, oh, wait, this ain't me. Like I've been with this friend who's been telling me that I'm a terrible person. Everything I say is wrong. Everything I do is wrong. Uh, you know, one of the signs, and this is just a very practical little tip, if someone, for example, doesn't feel the need to show up on time, okay, and they think it's cute, and they think it's funny, now hang with me here, because some of you could be like, Michelle, sometimes I get caught in traffic, me too, <laughs> me too, but I always say, like, if I'm late, it's because something out of my control happened, right, and I'm on my way, and I'm going to keep you posted, but I'm talking about people who just think like, it's their world and you're just living in it. You're just an accessory to their lives. Um, you'll wait on them because, of course, they're the king or the queen or, you know, whatever. Um, I, I, as a single person, I deal with this a lot with couples. If I'm a friend with, I'm friends with a couple, they think their relationship takes precedence over anything. So they could be having a fight and making me wait at a restaurant by myself where the waiter keeps coming over going, can I get you another drink? <laughs> You okay? Uh, while they're fighting. Do you feel what I'm saying here? So like, maybe that's not the best example because I know people are going to jump on that. I can feel it. I can always feel where people want to twist the narrative of what I'm saying. But what I'm getting at here is they were just being involved with each other and forgetting that there's someone sitting by themselves at a restaurant waiting on you. Okay? <laughs> Like, or if you have people who um, constantly keep wanting to shift around, if they don't have respect for your time, this is just a small little example. This is a small example and people will jump all over it, but watch the, oh yes, yes. Watch the people who have uh, a bad reaction to this video. <laughs> Make note of their names. Okay, do not be friends with those people. I know that sounds awful, but those are the people, if they feel like I'm talking about them, there's a reason, there's a reason, okay? And they're the ones that will constantly stand up their friends. They're the ones that, you know, they're only thinking of themselves. They don't have consideration for another. It's about love and respect, guys, all right? Again, if you get caught in traffic, that's, you know, <laughs> you can't do much about that. But, you know, I, I'm talking about people who just think that everyone's just gonna wait on them, always. <sighs> it's a tough video. Oh my God, this is gonna so, whatever, I can't care. If you want to unsubscribe, unsubscribe. What? <laughs> what? We want good energy here. Goddess of oneness. Okay, well, okay. So now having said all of that, what's in one person is in all of us, doggone it. So now, okay, fine. So that rude friend <laughs> won't show up on time. I guess that's us too, right? But really what we're doing here is, it's gonna be a little bit of a messy time. This is me shedding again, there we go. Um, it's going to be a messy time because as I've been saying, there's this density blast that's happening. And so people are going to start coming out and being like, hey, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. Hey, I see you. Hey, I see the toxicity, right? And it's not so that you fight. It's so that, you know, you can shake it off and shake it away. You can step out of those relationships where someone's not wanting to be one with you, where they're not wanting to, because they don't love and respect themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be very hard to connect with someone like that. So that's a big message for some of you out there. But the goddess of oneness talks about, yeah, okay, fine. Like as upset as we can get about that. <laughs> what we see in another is also in us. Um, but we can compensate for that. Does it mean that you have to be there showing them love and saving them? Um, I heard this one, She's I forget her name, but she's out there getting interviewed all the time. And I heard her in an interview say, I feel like if you're a light worker, you're here to produce light for the world. And so if you see somebody who is without light, that you should try to go and give them some light. Uh, <laughs> I'm Dom DeLuise over here. Okay. No. Okay. No. Hi. We have a problem with codependency already. No. 
because what's going to happen? The toxic people are just going to cut. Not that again, we're all one, so they're they're part of us. They're our brothers and sisters, right? What are you going to do? Um, <laughs> that's me being judgmental. I recognize that, but when you're doing that, they never learn to create their own light. They never go off on their own. They never take care of themselves. Why should they? Honey, if somebody came in and just fed me light all the time, I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to sit back and not work anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to go through any tough life lessons that, you know, is going to make me stronger. Why? Because I have someone here to take care of me. This is why a lot of people get into love partnerships, right? Okay, cool. So card number three. <sighs> This is really what's going on. We are these beautiful creatures that are denying ourselves the light, right? This is what we've been doing. And now we're tired. Well, she's kind of on her knees. And it's, the card says questioning your beliefs. But look at, if you can see it, look at the expression on her face. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Um, I don't know if that's going to focus, but there we go. Uh, if you can see the expression on her face, She's kind of like, what have I done? What just happened? What? Uh, okay. <laughs> so this sort of approach where everybody acts like money is the most important thing or because that's a big thing in our culture, especially American culture. Um, it's everything having to do with flashing your wealth, right? Um or being overt about your success. And that's the kind of thing where people get knocked they get knocked to their knees and they're kind of like, I don't know what just happened. Why is, why am I not happy? Why do I still cry at night? Why don't I feel loved? Right? Those kinds of things. So that's part of the density blast, right? It's going to get real messy. Okay. <laughs> I might want to hide. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> but this is definitely a time where it says, you know, you're questioning your beliefs, but you're questioning your judgment. Why did I let this person in my world? And it's not about going, person, you're bad. Get out. It's more about, no, I <laughs> let that person come in. Was I feeling this soul level need to save someone? Because I think that's what I'm here for. Was I lonely? Did it feel nice to have people for a minute? Even though I knew very well that I could never depend on them. They would never be there for me, but it was nice to pretend for a moment, wasn't it? It's done now. It's done. Truth is coming out and there will be blessings to ensue. <laughs> so let that truth come on out. This is rose petals. Okay. I'm sure this, you know, in the book, which I don't read, it probably has some other different message here. But what I'm saying is you're learning how to create. You're learning, you're facing the truth. She is faced out. She is completely faced out and she's like, I get it now. I totally understand what I want, which is different from this where it's like, she's kind of, she's like facing in this card, she's facing the past, right? Going, but I thought I was doing everything right. I thought I was following the life prescription. How did it not turn out well? How am I in this dark place? Does not matter because look what happens. And this all happens in the course of a week. This is a week's reading. Aha, uh -huh. I wonder what, uh, now I'm curious what's going to happen. <laughs> you're turning it around. You're turning the ship. Yeah, realizing, okay. So it's a very, it's a very spiritual week. It's a very heart-centered week. It's you getting into your heart. For those of you out there who might be like, Michelle, did you just say I'm being toxic? You might sit there and go, you know what? I'm always terrified to allow myself to get close to anybody because I'm afraid they're going to leave me. And so I put up a wall with people or, you know what? I think just because I have a crush on somebody that they should be open to my attention. Maybe they don't want your attention. <laughs> okay. Maybe it doesn't feel right for them. And maybe you're starting to go, okay, you know what? I need to back off a little bit. I need to stop trying to push my energy onto someone else. Yeah. I, there, there's a feeling here where everyone's finding their own centeredness, but in not in a self-centered way, <laughs> but in a lovely way. All right. So I want to pull some cards from the Gabriel deck. It's a positive message with like a little bit of a time, time to say your truth. All right. So this card that was sticking out is vision board, create a board with images and words that inspire you. How very 2009 of us, this deck isn't that old. Vision boards work. Okay. Hang with me. 
Michelle, I'm so mad at you this week. I'm sure you are. Whatever. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I don't need toxicity around here. But vision boards do work. However, it... What if you are focusing so much on a house that looks like something that would be built in Maine, but really you belong in California? You see what I'm saying? All right, like how do you know what the possibilities are if you're just going to uh, find what's available in a magazine, cut it out and put it on a board and look at it every day? Uh, you know, I mean... <laughs> I'm not feeling so hot today. The allergies are kicking my behind. Sorry if I'm being a little sassy. <laughs> my eyes hurt. Like, <laughs> hanging in there. I really am. Yeah, that's why there's no lashes, no contacts. It's a whole thing. But anyway, <laughs> the vision board. This is telling you to create a vision board. But let's, let's be a little more evolved with this, all right? Could you make a vision board? Sure. And a lot of you will say, Michelle, vision boards, you know, the, that's what has changed my world. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. But I would definitely tell you, wait for a few years and watch the fallout because a lot of times people who do vision boards they're not doing it with right intention they're being <laughs> they're being a little too laser focused about what's going on let's be focused about what we want to experience okay i would love to experience a beautiful clean safe spacious home that is my sanctuary how it looks i don't really care okay i don't really care i tend to picture blues and grays and white and you know very pristine like plants everywhere because I'm into that <laughs> right um to have like I want to have a meditation pod this has nothing to do with the reading I just want to tell somebody I want to have a meditation pod or something like I want to have like a secret garden in the in the backyard because that was one of my first books that I fell in love with as a kid um you know just stuff like that but how it exactly looks that's someone else's vision that you're seeing in a magazine that you're putting on your vision board what about the vision that is authentic to you? That that should be your vision board, okay? If you want to put something in the physical so that you can see it in the physical, put words, put sanctuary, put, you know, what I just said, cozy, clean, beautiful home, safe home. It's very protected. Meditation pod. <laughs> Secret garden, you know, all of those things. And make that your vision board. So let's tweak the approach. It's not 2008 anymore, okay? You guys are gonna hate me after this video. <laughs> Inspiration. Yes, your idea is divinely inspired. Take action accordingly to set it in motion. Again, they're saying with caution. And these are the only two cards we're gonna pull from this deck for this week. The, the real word, the most important word on this card is inspiration. When we start saying, oh, your idea is divinely inspired, people's egos get in there and they're like, that's right, I'm, it's divinely inspired, you know, all this stuff. And like, we end up going down a bad road, right? I shouldn't be laughing about this, but we are ridiculous as human beings. We kind of are, okay? So inspiration talks about tap into what inspires you, what brings you into your joy, what uplifts you. Yeah, okay, cool. So there's that. Let's get, oh God, the whole time I'm like the fallout, the fallout, the fallout. Yeah, whatevs. Oh, uh, is that right? Okay, well, a car went on the floor. I have to go out of frame to get it. That was harder than it needed to be. All right, so we have Sapphire. This is the card that jumped out of the deck and went onto the floor. Sapphire, regenerate your body. The number is 38. So yes, you can take that quite literally. We're rejuvenating our bodies. We're getting back in tune with our authentic selves, all that good stuff. But this is actually having a new appreciation for your body and watching how certain energies definitely affect the body. Okay, so what we mean is if you're putting a lot of mental energy a lot of mental energy into trying to manifest. And that works, as I've said, but there's going to be, the energy whips around and it goes, boom. Why? Because you're coming from the ego. Hi. <laughs> How well did you think that was gonna go for you, okay? Did you think you were gonna manifest that one guy, even though that meant, you know, pulling him away from his current relationship? You think there wasn't gonna be some fallout for that? Just saying. So regenerate your body. Pay attention to how your the messages your body is bringing back to you. All right? That's imperative. That's going to tell you where your energy is. Take a different approach, I think, is the bottom line here. All right? So I'm going to get the heck off this video. I am sending you all so much love. Don't leave hate. I will block the haters. I am sending you love and take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>
they think their relationship takes sheep. <laughs> no dogs barking. 